Hi everyone, it's Franny from Heidi and Franny's Garage and you have a Porsche 996 and you've always wanted to put in a garage door opener in your center console? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that today. So that's up next on Heidi and Franny's Garage. <laughs> Tools and parts we'll need. We're gonna need a soldering iron and a multimeter to check the continuity. Now if you've got just a regular continuity meter that will work just fine as well. Some solder, our wire cutters, and wire crimpers. Some reading glasses so I can see a little better the small little bits on the circuit boards. Our new switch which is a Targa switch. Looks a lot like a garage door up and down switch our remote, our small little micro remote, and some spade connectors, crimp on spade connectors. We'll run you through the steps really quick. We're gonna have to take off this round sort of horseshoe cover uh, from the center console, pull that out. We're going to take out, I already have a switch in here for my garage door, but you're probably gonna have a blank here. You're gonna have to pop out your blank and put in your new switch, and we're gonna wire up the switch to a, a small garage door opener. And we're also gonna set it up so that the switch lights up at night, so that's kinda cool too. The switch is kind of nice. It rocks to the left and to the right. So if you've got two garage doors like we do, you can actually set it up for the left one, rock left, you get the left garage door, and rock right, you get the right garage door. Okay, so step one is going to be to remove this, this center horseshoe bit here. The, this is a little bit fiddly. In my opinion, it's like the hardest part of the whole thing. I just You just wanna be super careful with it. I believe there are four clips. I'm gonna to have to double check this. There are one here, one here, and I think one here and down here if I remember correctly, but we'll see. All right, let me go ahead and get into this. There we go, got my fingernails under this a little bit. There, we got that top corner, that's good. It snaps a little, it's a, it's a little bit scary. Okay, so now we've got the two top corners here. Now we have to get the bottom carefully. There we go. Okay, so that's the bottom left. We'll work on the bottom right here. Ah, there we go, okay. So we'll gently pull this out. You'll see all the switches and such are, are mounted actually to the plate here. So I've removed my switch because I already had my switch in, but I wanted to show it as though you were pulling it off and you didn't have the switch already installed. You'd probably just have a blank right here. Now, there are a bunch of connectors on the back here. You probably want to pull the ones on the left-hand side. I, I'm putting my uh, garage door opener on the left-hand side, but you'll need to get to the light uh, connections on one of these switches anyways, and it'll make it a lot easier to sort of maneuver around. So you can just pull the connectors out of the back of these things. It's not too awfully difficult. You'll probably have to sort of work them out. I've already loosened them up a little bit and they will pop off. There's really no connector holding them on. It's just the pressure of the, the actual connection tabs. Okay, so now that you've got this apart enough, what we're going to do is we're actually going to move to the workbench and we're going to wire up our switch to our new garage door opener so that it'll be all set and we'll just go ahead and snap it back in when we're done and hook it up to the power for the lights so that the lights and the switch turn on. So that's next. So the first step and the one you really don't want to forget is to program your garage door opener so it opens the doors you want it to open and know which buttons on it open the appropriate door. So for me I have my big garage door on the big button and then this little button right here is for our smaller garage door. Okay, so you just need to know that and you need to get that done ahead of time. Uh, the, our old garage door was a Genie garage door and so it had three button switches on it and the new one has a three button switch as well. So we're going, going to be using two. The switch has five connectors. The two on the outside there are actually for the lights. 
the three in the center, the one at the top is a common or a ground, and the two at the bottom are for the switch if you rock it left or if you rock it right. So the first thing we're going to do is make a small wiring harness for our lights. It's very simple. You just need a bit of wire. Just find yourself a little bit of wire and you'll need a couple of uh, these spade crimp on connectors here, these sorts of guys here. And all you're going to do is just add a couple of um, crimp connectors onto the ends of your wire and the polarity doesn't really matter. Then go ahead and push your spade connectors onto your switch. All right, simple enough. Okay, great. So we got that done. Now the next bit's gonna require a little bit of surgery here. So we're going to have to take our garage door opener apart and get in there. We're gonna have to solder some wires to it. And since I've got this other Genie opener, I'll show you what I did for this one. And I'm going, this is the new one, is the LiftMaster one. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this one open. You can see the inside of that as well. The Genie has a teeny little screw on it, so we'll go ahead and take that out. All right, comes apart pretty easily. These garage door openers are designed to be taken apart so you can swap out the battery in them. All right, so I'm gonna show you what I did on the old one. So the switch is, the switches are here, these little guys here. And if we turn it over, we can see that the switch is here to here and here to here. So this is the connecting wire or the common between the two switches and it comes down here to the LED. So what I did was my white wires go on the outsides, which are the actual uh, switch side, right? And then the common I took off of that side of the LED. So it's here, our common wire, and then I just soldered onto it right here. We're gonna go ahead and repeat the same process that I did for this circuit board on our new one. For the lift master to get it open, there's a little slot on the side of it here that you can stick a coin or a screwdriver into and just pop, this, pop these two pieces apart. It's pretty simple here. Now, this, this seems like kind of a dumb step, but I'm going to take this, see this teeny little ring that's on the end of this thing here? That's just gonna sit in the dash and rattle. So we don't need that anymore, so I'll go ahead and take that off. Well, looking at our circuit board, we wanna uh, go ahead and find our common and our two switches. So I'm also going to mark on the circuit board which one controls which door. So if you've got it apart like this, it'll just work. You, I know that the big one is this big one on the bottom, is the big one here, okay? And so the other one for me is this one here. So this is my big door here and this is my little door. The other one we're not gonna use at all. Okay, so I've put a little dot on the circuit board. Uh, the big one's pretty easy, but this is the other one. I don't want to forget which one it is. So I've got a little dot by it, so we're all set there. So the next step's gonna to be to trace the little traces on the circuit board and find the common. That's gonna be on our wiring harness here that we used. It's gonna be our black wire. So, and then uh, we're gonna need the other side of the two switches for our two white wires. The ground is here. The hot is the other side. So we only need two. So we're going to use the one on the far right and the one with our little blue dot. We're going to hook up our black wire to the connections that's common between the two switches. And then our two white wires are going to get attached to the hot side of each of the two switches. Now, since you'll be building this yourself from, from scratch, what you're gonna need is some dual wire here and then a separate single wire. On the end of these things is just gonna be our simple crimp connectors, our, our uh, female spades. So simple enough on that. They're all three the same, so the connectors are exactly the same. 
So we only need to strip back a small bit of wire here. on all three wires. Now in order to get the wires to solder better onto the circuit board, I'm going to go ahead and tin them first. In other words, just put a little bit of solder on the end of each one of them. That way when I go and put them on the circuit board, I'm going solder to solder and not bare wire to solder. All right, so we just tin the end of these. There we go, like that. Okay, and then this one. Okay, cut a little off the end of this one. They just don't need to be that long. One thing you do want to think about is you are going to have to put it back in the case. So think about where you're going to put your wires first. So you maybe put the little guy back in its case, just quick like a bunny, and see if where the, just where you think the wires will go best. So it looks like from this, we could take our ground here probably be easiest and then we'll go ahead and pull straight down this way and then probably out this way for our other switch. I like to put a little extra solder where I'm going to put this which is right here there we go give us a little blob of new solder lay our wire on top heat it up and let it sit for a second and boom, that should be that. Okay, let it cool before you pull it off. All right, so that's our common wire, great. Now just so I can keep it straight, I'm going to make my red wire, my red striped of this dual wire here, the big garage door. Just you know, however you want, just so you'll remember it. Once again, we'll add a little bit of solder here. There we go. Come down on top of it here. Heat it up and let it sit until it cools. Okay, great. So that's that one. Now the next one, put a little solder on there first just to kind of beef it up a little bit. Here we go. All right, lock that down. Let it cool. So now we have our wire soldered. We have our common here. This is also a common. And then our two hots, one for this switch and one for that one. Give the wires a little wiggle. Don't go crazy with it. But you just want to make sure you don't have a cold solder joint. That's pretty important. All right, your next step at this point is to go ahead and test this thing to make sure that your garage doors will go up and down when you when you short out these wires. Now, if you've already put the connectors on the back, you can actually use your switch for this, which is a good way to go. So remember, our ground is this one here, and then each one of these tabs represents rotating, the, rocking the switch to that side. So we'll take our black wire, I'm going to take our black wire and hook it into this central one here. Great. All right. The red one is the big garage door for me. And you can see on the switch that the big garage door, I wanted to be the bigger of the two sides of this switch. This is so totally arbitrary, however you want, whatever makes sense to you. But that's the way I'm going to do it. So since we know that they connect on the side, on the that the pin connects to this side of the rocker. I'm going to take my red wire, which is this one here with a little red, with a little red stripe on it. I'm going to connect it on that side. All right. And I'm going to connect the other one to the other side. So now we've connected our ground to the center one and then our other two switches to the other sides. Now it's the moment of truth. We're going to go ahead and see if our garage doors go up and down. So let's see. So this will be the big one. There we go. We can hear the big one going up. And now we'll go ahead and test the other one. And there it goes. And there goes the other garage door. Woohoo! Now what we're going to do 
is go ahead and reinstall the switch back into that front plate. It just really slides in from the back and clicks in. It's pretty easy to put in. And then we're going to have to connect our two light wires. So these are for the light lighted part of the switch to another switch, the next door neighbor of this switch on exactly the same two posts here. Now that we have our circuit board all wired up and tested and it works just fine, the last thing we need to do is go ahead and put it back in the plastic case. We can't have this flopping around all out like this. So we're also going to need to get our wires out of it. So you may need to sort of bore a little hole in the side of it to get the wires out. Okay, so we've got a little cut in the side there. It's going to be easy enough to get the wires out. So uh, go ahead and put this whole thing back together. All right, well, we're all set. We've got our wiring harness and our little remote here. And we're all set to go ahead and put this all back in the car. Okay, so we're all set to put our switch back in. Last thing we're going to do is test our light to make sure that it works as well. So like I said, however you want to do this, but the connections you're looking for are on the outside of any of the other switches. So the yellow one's at the top. This one is the next door neighbor, actually the black one here. So you can test it by go ahead and throwing these in like that and then turning on the light to see if your light if your switch actually lights up so I don't know if you can see it very well but it is lit up so our next step is going to be to install the actual switch into the plate now I believe this switch can kind of go either way it'll go in this way or you can go in this way so just once again however you've wired it up whatever made sense to you for me the big one the sort of bigger part of the switch is for the big garage door, which is on the left as we're driving up to our garage. So I'm going to install it that way so that this bigger one's on the left and the little one's on the right. So the trick to putting it in, and I was just fumbling with it a bit, is to try and get the bottom connected first, sort of put it in at an angle, and then sort of pop it up so it goes in. All right, so there you got it set on the bottom and then push it in the top and it should go right in. There it goes. There's going to be a bit of a snap. It's a little tight, which is great. Okay, wonderful. So the rest of this is really pretty simple. All we're going to do is put our connectors back on and then we're going to snap our plate back in. We'll test one more time before we get it all together and just to make sure everything's happy. Now, and as I said before, I do not like to cut into the wiring harness. So I'm going, this is kind of chimpy actually. I'm going to push the, the light wires into the outer connectors on this, the next neighbor up, which is just this black switch here. The nice thing is that the lights aren't polarized, so it doesn't matter which way you connect them up. We don't want to forget I disconnected the little uh, uh, intermittent wiper connection at the bottom. You don't want to forget to connect that one back up. Where is it? There it is. There we go. Okay, so I've got all my wires reconnected. Now, really quick like a bunny, I am going to test everything one more time before I go ahead and snap this whole assembly together because I just don't want to have to take it all apart again. So we're going to test both of our garage doors left and right. And we're going to test to make certain that the switch lights up as well. So here we go. So we'll go ahead and do the left garage door. And there we go. Yay. Isn't that awesome? And now we'll test the right one. And there it goes. You can hear it go click. All right, great. So the last thing we need to test is our light. Just to make darn sure we got our wiring in just fine. Turn our lights on. And... I can verify that the that the switches are all lighting up. They all look good. I can see the back lighting, so that's great. So we're good to go.
Okay, with everything tested, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and push our remote into the little access panel back here so we get it out of the way and our wiring as well. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, put our faceplate back on. Feed that back in. Now, if you're worried about this thing making noise or being or rattling back in there, now's a good time to sort of wrap it in something, anything. You can wrap it in tissue paper, whatever you want. All right. Okay. And then we go ahead and just fit our panel back in slowly and carefully and until it's just about seated. We want to make sure that we don't have any wires binding anywhere. And uh, you just push on the tops and bottom corners here to set this piece. There's one, two, down here, three, and down this corner, four. Okay, we just press on this panel. And that's how you install a garage door opener in the center console on a Porsche 996. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, and I imagine you probably will, this was a pretty technical uh, episode. Just leave them down below and I'll go ahead and answer them for you. So uh, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.